on guys and welcome to the video. Now today's vehicle is a blast from the past, 32 years to be exact. It's a 1990 Ford Mustang and it is in desperate need of some TLC. All right, well taking a look around this Mustang and after sitting for years and not really being taken care of, the new owner brought it in to get it all cleaned up so he can enjoy his new purchase. But before that can happen, all the pollen and what looks like seeds needs to be taken care of. And with there being quite a bit of clear coat failure all around, I'll definitely need to be careful near those spots today. But moving inside, and besides the small mountain of cigarette ash, the interior isn't looking as bad as I thought it might. Although there's still a fair bit to do as there's caked on dust everywhere, some stains in the carpets and seats, and the carpet in the back has a nice thick layer of dust on it too. But just before we jump into reviving this Mustang, take a second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you've got the bell on so you never miss out on a future video. Okay guys, well I am definitely looking forward to the detail today and to bringing this Mustang back to its former glory. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the transformation. All right, well getting to work with the pressure washer now, and like I mentioned in the opening, the paint on this Mustang isn't in the best of shape. There's quite a few areas where the clear coat is failing, most notably on the roof and the hood. So I'll be very careful around those areas today, both while pressure washing and during the wash stage later on. working my way around the vehicle and to give you some background on the Mustang, like I mentioned earlier, the owner picked it up a few months ago off someone who had left it sitting for a couple of years and with only 244,000 kilometers or about 151,000 miles, there's still lots of life left in this car. The new owner had been looking for one for a number of years as there aren't many of these around here these days and with his dad having owned a similar era Cobra when he was growing up, he's always wanted one of his own so it'll be a pleasure to get this looking its best for him today. Now with the car only having two doors, this step goes a tiny bit quicker today, as should the whole detail being that there's only two seats in here. So I've got to say it's a nice change of pace from the usual five to seven seater cars and SUVs I've done lately. Okay, now since the season of bug guts is upon us, I'm spraying on some of my bug remover to help dissolve and loosen them up so they'll be really easy to remove when I wash the car in a few minutes.
Okay, with the car washed and rinsed off, I'll grab my Detail Geek Ultra Plush drying towel to get it dry. And if you haven't picked up one of these yet, you're missing out. I can safely say it's right up there as one of the best drying towels on the market and can hold a ton of water. So be sure to give it a look at DetailGeekAutoCare.com. Okay, with the floor clean and the car back in the garage, it's time to get these seats removed and have a look underneath to see the full extent of what we're dealing with today. And it looks like a fair bit more dust and debris and some rust stains from the seat bolts as well. Working my way around with the vacuum and given the age of this car, it's no surprise that the carpet is super thick and plush, though it's almost too thick as dirt and debris can actually get stuck deep down in the pile to the point you can't even see it anymore. So I'm noticing that as I go back over spots, there's dirt that's popping up out of nowhere, which just means that I'll need to be extra thorough here because there could still be more hiding even when it looks visually clean. Moving up to the driver's foot well and to answer a question I see asked all the time, the vacuum I'm using is a central vac. The unit is a VacuFlow 466Q and is actually one of the things I'll be upgrading when I move into the new studio. If you haven't been over to the second channel to check out the studio build series yet, you should give it a look. I believe it was episode 3 where I explained all the electrical decisions for the building, like having 240 volt power for the new vacuum. But if you want to see where things are at currently, then check out episode 9. My cabinets finally arrived and you'll get to see the whole install process as well as a sneak peek at what's going on the walls so make sure you check that video out.
working my way around the interior with the vacuum and my boar's hair detail brush. And if you've ever wondered why I do this step, well, it's to agitate and loosen up all the trap dirt or debris down in the crevices around all the interior trim. And with caked on dust like this, it sometimes doesn't get it all, but it does make it easier for me when I steam everything later on, as there won't be quite as big of a mess to deal with. Starting on the passenger seat now, and with this vehicle being from an era where seats were nice and plush and well made, I know that I can use my green drill brush on them pretty aggressively without having to worry about damaging the upholstery in any way. And one other interesting thing about this car is that with it being a 1990, I believe this now holds the record for the oldest vehicle I've detailed on the channel. Turning my attention to the rust stains on the driver's side now and with some of my Detail Geek carpet cleaner sprayed on, I'll get it agitated and the rust is no match for this combo. A few passes with the extractor and it's all cleaned up and looking new again, so there's definitely something to be said for these older vehicles and the quality of materials used. Here's the surprisingly dark and sludgy water pulled out of the Mustang today. Gross.
Turning to the pedals, and it's not often that I have a manual transmission vehicle in my garage, but I really do enjoy it. My first couple vehicles I owned were both manuals, and I really do miss getting to drive one. Maybe someday I'll pick up an older project car like this, but this particular car actually brings back some memories for me, as when I was a kid my neighbor used to have a blue one just like it, and I remember being pretty envious of him, as I certainly couldn't afford one back then, so it's pretty cool to get to work on one today. Now with half of the seats being leather, I'm using my Detail Geek leather brush and leather cleaner to get all the dirt and grime removed, and then I'll follow it up with some leather conditioner to leave them looking and feeling soft and supple. Okay, with some super secret spray in hand, it's time for this week's members question, which comes from Shannon, and it's how do your paint sealant and super secret spray compare to each other? How do you decide which to use on a vehicle? So to answer the first question, the paint sealant is obviously more of a traditional product in that it's applied with an applicator pad, and it's formulated with synthetic polymers, which provide longer lasting protection. However, the ceramic spray sealant is very similar and meant to do the same job, only it's easier to apply and will last for roughly half the time, but in terms of deciding which to use on a vehicle, it's really personal preference. Though in this case, I went with the spray as running a machine over all the areas where the clear coat is failing isn't a great idea, so I opted for a more controlled approach today.
right guys, well a relatively quick eight hours later and the Mustang is all cleaned up and looking almost as good as it did 32 years ago when it rolled off the assembly line. Now if you guys enjoyed this transformation, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos, enjoy the guitar outro and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.